I've explained in great detail here on United People's TV just how big this summer is in terms of the changes that are happening at the club. But I know for a lot of you, it's kind of hard to understand everything that's going on because so much is happening. I've already done a video on, an up on the updated structure at our club, and I did that like four weeks ago. But that's now out of date. That's how many changes are happening at the club. And what I want to do in this video is run through them all again and bring you bang up to date with the full structural changes at Manchester United. And not just in the footballing department, but every single element of the club. And why you should, I think, be so excited about hopefully what can be a new era starting under Eric Ten Hag. So if you do watch the whole video and you do, I think you stick around for 10 minutes. I think you'll learn a thing or two about the changes that are happening. And make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you do enjoy it. But look, you'll remember, of course, that we took a look at how Manchester United's hierarchy was what was it, even six months ago with Ralph Radnick coming in and the staff that he brought in? Of course, that's what it was. Now, about four weeks ago, I did an updated video on this and I restructured it. You can see, oh, well, that's a bit wrong now, that Ralph Ragnick is the consultant there. I was thinking about the deputy football director who hadn't come in. We were talking about who's Eric Ten Hag going to bring in as his staff and what's going to happen maybe with Paul Mitchell. To this point now, where we're looking at this is the current hierarchy at Manchester United. Now that Eric Ten Hag has come in, Andy O'Boyle's been brought in. We've got Mitchell van der Gag and Steve McLaren, both confirmed. Mike Phelan, he won't be there at the start of the season. Don't lose your shit. That's happened. But of course, I think more are still going to be happening, right? I've got Eric Ramsey down here. That's So this is the updated one from The Athletic. And I've just made a couple of changes because I think we, we will be getting a first team coach in. And I want to run through all these changes. And I want to explain to you, you know what's happened on the surface level. We know that Ed Woodward leaving the club and Richard Arnold coming in gave Manchester United the opportunity to do something a little bit different. Richard Arnold always talked about delegation. And I tell you what, we've seen a ton of delegation so far from Richard Arnold. And a big part of that has been the rise of John Murto. John Murto being appointed as our first football director back in March and Darren Fletcher coming in as a technical director. I know it's fashionable to say that Darren Fletcher shit at what he does. I think Darren Fletcher's been tasked with doing a ton of different roles. I don't really think he knows what he's doing. In any of them, particularly. So maybe he isn't good. But we can't make that sort of assumption. I don't think it's, it's fair to make that assumption. And all of us made a fair assumption that, not a fair assumption, an unfair assumption that John Murtaugh was just obviously going to be crap at what he's done. But he's overseen some serious changes at the club. And one of the big ones I felt was Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout leaving the club, our two chief scouts. <clears throat> but the thing I want you to understand about all these changes, right, to the point where we've reached this point here, and that's that there's more changes than, than meets the eye. If we rewind to February, it's every aspect of the club really getting regenerated and changed. Charlie Brooks, who is Manchester United's Director of Communications, he handed in his resignation in February. That now has happened. Manchester United's Chief Strategy Officer, Heman Siao. So that's not really something that Manchester United fans will really give two shits about. But it's a corporate shakeup that shows that every side of the club really is being changed. And if you're looking back towards the first team as well, I ran through this in, in May when this came out from David Ornstein. But Manchester United appoint, appointed uh, player care specialist Hugo Schechter to perform a full audit on the quality of the club's pastoral offering first team environment. Sounds like a lot of gob gobbledygook there. But it's the idea that the club is admitting and understanding that what we currently have on offer isn't good enough that needs to change and we went down there and we discussed it at the time as well and Wiley who was Manchester United's current head of player care he chose to retire after 36 years at the club so from it's not just a case of a new manager coming in it's not just a case of John Murto coming in there really is almost no stone unturned with the amount of changes that have happened now there's one change that's happened that of course you know that I don't particularly 100% agree with. I question whether Ralph Ragnick... I mean, you, you saw my interview I did with Guido. Really, really like Guido. Really great guy to talk to. Very genuine bloke. Like, I'd love to have a drink with him at some point. That'd be great. But Manchester United's board never trusted Ralph Ragnick. I think his football, or the lack of quality football, undermined his ability to command respect and influence inside the board. And it was just... 
it was messy. It was messy from the start, from everything not being clarified with his role at the beginning. At this point now, so if I was to rewind and look at the video that I did here, that's probably the biggest biggest change here is the fact that Ralph Randick doesn't exist. And of course, we know that the deputy football director coming in is another big one that's happened. That's Eric Ten Hag working with John Murto, but Andy O'Boyle coming in to work with him too. And if we were to go down here and we see, this is where Andy O'Boyle, right? It's not a sexy appointment. It's not going to be one that anybody gets dead excited about, but it's absolutely a necessary appointment because it means John Murto can stay a atop the tree here well not, not atop the tree we know who's top of the tree this fucker piss off um but john murto now will be taken away from the, all the day-to-day the -day bureaucracy if you want to call it that speaking with nick cox finding out about those players who are coming through now i think the the graph could have been uh, designed a little bit better by the athletic here because steve brown will have a direct route into john murto they will be working together on the recruitment side of things andy o'boyle working uh, alan dawson Man, Alan Dawson, is he one of the survivors? Matt Judge, of course, is a player, a player, somebody who left as well. And that was a significant sacking by the club. But if you were to rewind 12 months or so, and you were to look at this, and you were to see the... Ch look at that. Ed Woodward, he's now gone. Solskjaer, he's now gone. Phelan will be gone. Carrick's gone. Nicky Butts obviously left. Simon Wells, he's obviously gone. Marcel Bout, he's gone. Jim Lawler, he's gone. Matt Judge, he's gone. Alan Dawson, they got that wrong because he's not gone. But just the widespread change to go from that to that. And of course, as I said, there's, there's a couple more changes that will happen. We will be getting one more first team coach. That's being reiterated by the majority of journalists uh, who have any sort of um, credibility. And Eric Ramsey, I believe, is going to be the man who is kept on from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's staff. Now, I think you know what I think about Eric Ramsey. And the fact that we've been so woeful at scoring from set pieces and also conceding too many set pieces as well. He's supposed to be a set piece specialist. Hmm. Bit weird. That needs to improve. But I think because of his age, because he's somebody who Eric Ten Hag can probably mould into a, probably a better coach, I think he'll work with Eric Ramsey. But Steve McLaren's come in. That's been confirmed. Mitchell van der Gag's come in. That's been confirmed. This is the only one we're really waiting for now. I think what we're looking at is a pretty complete structure. I'd be very surprised if I had to do another video update on this. As I said, look, if you were to look at the amount of change from that to that there, you can see that there were still so many questions to ask. And when was this video? I put this video out on the 30th of April. Jeez. Just over, what was it, five, was that five weeks ago? And now we know it's Steve McLaren there. Now we know it's Mitchell van der Gag there. Now we know that it's going to be one more first team coach. We don't know who that's going to be. Justin Cochrane, obviously, he's going to be the link between Nick Cox and the head of academy. He's going to be the person going, look, Eric, there's a couple of players that you really should be bringing through into the first team now. But that's pretty much our new structure going forward, is this. Richard Arnold, of course, is delegating the footballing matters to John Murto. Eric Ten Hag shouldn't really ever have to have a conversation with Richard Arnold. He should be speaking directly with John Murto. And that's what that line of communication is. It means that Ten Hag and Murto will be speaking directly to each other means Cochrane and Cox will be speaking directly to each other. As I said, I think the only slight error I would put down here is the fact that Steve Brown is down there underneath Andy O'Boyle. I don't think Andy O'Boyle will be directly involved in the transfer side of things. That will be just down to John Murto. And that is, a, I'm going to do a separate video on this, right? Because I think it's extremely important. But the rise of John Murto at Manchester United, I really hope it works out. I really hope it works out, but he has got a significant amount of power inside this structure. The whole football side of things relies on him. And I suppose technically, that's what a football director does. Of course, it's what they do. But it shouldn't be too much of a surprise that he's kind of worked his way into this position. The jury is, of course, still out. But I hope in this video, I hope I've helped you understand how we've had a conversation about how the hierarchy was under Ralph, under Ralph Ragnick and how that changed to this situation. And this was accurate only on April the 30th, only five weeks ago. But we've now reached a point where it's all completely changed again. It's streamlined. There's less bodies in there. It should hopefully mean a better process of working. And it has to be spearheaded by that man there. John Murto is, is the person who's going to make this, is going to make or break this structure. 
If this structure is to work at Manchester United, it will be because John Murto is doing his job properly as our football director and Eric Ten Hag is hopefully doing his job properly in making us actually a decent football team again. But I hope this video has helped you understand, honestly, every single change that's gone on behind the scenes. And as I tried to explain this video there, it's not just with the first team players leaving who are out of contract. It's not just with the players who will be sold, hopefully, this summer. It's not just with the players who are coming in. It's not just with the changes to the football side of things. Our communications chief has left. Our chief of strategy has left. Our head of player care has left. Every single element of Manchester United is getting looked at and invariably changed. And I hope that this begins a, a different, a different era is the wrong word, and maybe you can describe it as an era. But just a time when Manchester United as a football club start acting like the biggest football club in the world that we are. And not some joke Sunday league club where people are in power that don't deserve to be there, that don't know what they're doing there. And I'll be honest, it all revolves around him. John Murto, man. Don't let us down. A lot of changes happened so far. I've agreed with. I don't particularly agree with at the Ralph Radnick situation, how it happened. But I don't also don't particularly think that Eric Ten Hag wanted to work with him. So in that sense, I have to support what Eric Ten Hag wants, right? I don't want to be a hypocrite. But you can let me know what you think about everything that's happened at the club. As I said, if you were to rewind 12 months there and to see from that to that, it really is wholesale change in Manchester United. It will be that year that I've, I've said this quite a few times as well. The year that's remembered for when United really, truly, genuinely tried to rebuild the club. Not just about players anymore. It's deeper than that. And we're seeing those changes. But you can let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you're new to United People's TV. And I'll be back tomorrow with the live streams. Take it easy, everyone.